Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson again, and we are continuing our studies. This time we're reviewing the grade 8 New York State math exam with examples from the 2016 release questions. If you need help with your homework, there's Dial a Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday through Thursday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget to watch our show, Math Time, on Tuesdays at 4.30 to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision on Channel 15. Check out our YouTube videos on YouTube. My channel name is Dan Robinson. Take a look at our latest release, our PKMS Math Prep 17. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. All right, here's our first question. Solve the system of equations below. And here I notice we have on this side 2x plus y equal 10. And then again, we also have 2x plus y equals negative 10 this time. So I'm noticing you have the same thing on this side, but it's equaling to different numbers on that side. So just by looking at it, if I use the same x and same y in both of these sides, I'm not going to get the same number because on the right side because they're different numbers. So I'm going to say there's no solution to this by looking at it, but let's prove it by doing an elimination method. To eliminate, we're going to use uh, something we're going to multiply by to cross out, cancel out one or two of the variables. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 1. When I multiply by negative 1, this will make this negative 2x. And when I multiply this 4y by negative 1, that'll make that negative 4y. And multiply the negative 10 by that, that'll give me positive 10. Let me bring down the other equation from the top, 2x plus 4y equals 10. Now, let's do our addition. The negative 2x and positive 2x, I notice they cancel out, giving me 0x. Negative 4y plus positive 4y, they cancel out, giving me 0y. And 0x and 0y is just 0. And on this side, I have 10, positive 10 plus 10 gives me 20. Well, I'm noticing I have 0 on one side and 20 on the other side. That does not equal, so there is no solution. So if you say no solution, you are correct. And let's check it. C is correct. So let's move on. Here we have what is the value that satisfies the equation below. 3 parenthesis t plus 4 parenthesis minus 2 parenthesis 2t plus 3 parenthesis equals negative 4. All right, so we have choices. We could guess and check, which is one way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute inside to the what's inside the parenthesis. So I'll have an equation. 3 times t is 3t. Three, 3 times 4 is positive 12. Now I have a minus sign, which I'm going to hook on to the 2 and make that negative 2 or minus 2, if you like, and multiply the inside terms. So minus 2 times 2t, two two that'll give me a minus 4t. Minus 2 times positive 3, that'll give me a minus 6. And this is equal to minus 4, negative 4. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now it's time to get our like terms. So I'm going to start with my t. I have 3 t's which are positive, and four t's, which are negative. I cannot add that. I have to subtract. So that's going to give me one little t. And I'm going to choose the sign of the four because it is a bigger term than the three. So the sign is negative. So that gives me a negative one t. Now i got to get my constants together. I have a positive 12 and a negative 6. Well, those are different signs again. So 12 minus 6 is what I'm going to do, and that'll give me 6, and I'm going to write positive because 12 is bigger than 6. So positive 6. So I have one little t, a negative 1t plus 6 equals negative 4. 
All right, let me continue by getting the 6 to the other side using the additive inverse or opposite so that it can cancel out the positive 6. I'll have negative 1t equals negative 10 because there's no such thing as subtraction. It's really addition of the opposite. So this would be negative 4 plus the opposite of 6 would be negative 6. And that's how we get negative 10. And now let's divide by negative 1 both sides so we can get t by itself and make it positive. So t is equal to same signs when we divide will give us positive. 10 divided by 1 is 10. So our answer is going to be c, positive 10. So let's guess, get the guess and check people uh, to show their work as well. So let's erase this. So if you were to guess and check, it's really just checking is what you're doing. What you're going to do is substitute in the place of the letter T your value that you guessed. So I'm really checking it. I'm saying T was equal to 10, positive 10. So it's minus 2. And I'll put parenthesis in place of where T is going to be here. So um, parenthesis and there's an equal to negative 4. Okay. So this is what you did when you guessed and checked. You just chose one of the numbers and you did the solving. So I'm just checking my equation. So I'm putting a 10 here and I'm going to put a 10 here and I'm going to go on and solve the equation. So let's do the inside of the parenthesis. I have 10 plus 4 is 14. So inside this parenthesis I have 14. I have the parenthesis over here. I have 2 times 10. That will give me 20. And now let me bring down the, the other things that are there. I got a 3 I have to bring down. I have a minus 2. Parenthesis. This is 2 times 10. That gave us a 20. I have a plus 3 I have to bring down. And I have an equal to negative 4. All right. Now, let's get rid of the parenthesis again. I have 3 times 14, when that I believe is 1242. And I have parenthesis that have stuff inside of it. 20 plus 3 is 23. Let me bring down again one more time. Uh, this I cleared that up, so that's 42. I have a minus 2 parenthesis. 20 plus 3 gave me the 23 close parenthesis and gives me a negative 4. Now, so I have 42 and I got parenthesis one more time. Minus 2 times 23 is minus 46. And that's supposed to be equal to negative 4. So let's see if it does. Well, I cannot combine these because Subtract these because there's no such thing as subtraction, so it's really adding the opposite of the second term. So the 46 is the second term, so I'm going to change that to negative 46. And we know we have to subtract, and that will give us negative 4 on both sides. So it does check out when our value of x, I'm sorry, t is equal to 10. So if you said C, you're in great shape with that problem by guess and check and doing it algebraically. So I hope you understand what's going on. If you're not sure, rewatch the video, write down your questions, bring them in, and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Here's our next question. Function P is a linear function with a y-intercept of 5. Hmm. Function Q is defined as the equation y equal 1, negative 1 third x plus 4. Which statement must be true about functions P and Q? All right, well, let's write them out and do a little text coding there, underlining a few things. So function, we have a function called P, and they say it's linear. All right, so that means the exponent is going to be no higher than 1. So it's a function it has a y-intercept. It did not say anything about the slope. So if you remember our 
little formula for a slope intercept form y equals plus y equals mx plus minus b so there's the formula in this case there is no slope so I could put 0 for the slope for x and my y intercept would be 5 so that's what the first function p would be now I have another function called q q is defined by the equation y equals sign here y equals negative one-third x plus four so which statement must be true about the functions well both functions have the same slope well that's not true uh, they didn't mention the slope on this one so I put a zero for that so that's not true they don't have the sl same slope I have a negative slope well this one has a negative slope but that one doesn't have a slope so they didn't mention what the slope was, so I cannot assume. The functions will have the same input when y equals 0. Well, input means when you put in a number for x. So if I put in a number here, they're going to have the same uh, y is going to equal to 0. Well, let's put in 3. 3 times 0 is going to be 0 plus 5, that's going to be supposedly equal to 0. Well, 3 times 0 is 0 plus 5 equals 0. It equals 5. It doesn't equal to 0, so that's not true. But let me try again. Um, I'll put 3 in here. Negative 1 third times 3, that'll give me negative 1 plus 4. That doesn't equal to 0. That equals to positive 3. So this statement is absolutely false also. So you're not going to get it equal to that. You're going to get it equal to some different numbers. So I notice uh, in what we did when we put in um, the number 3 as our input for both of these, we had different answers. The answer over here for the first equation when we put in 3, 3 times 0 was 0 plus 5 gave us 5. When we put in 3 over here, we had negative 1 third times 3 gave us negative 1 plus 4. This was equal to positive 3. Our outputs were different. So I'm going to go with choice D because our outputs were different. So when x was equal to 0, we could put in 0, but I just may believe it was 3. So my output is definitely different. But if you want to go ahead and take a look at that, so let's just take a look at that. So my outputs were definitely different. So I will erase that and try it with, with uh, my um, function will have different output when x equals 0. So OK, I'll put in 0. 0 times 0 plus 5. 0 times 0 is 0 plus 5 will give me 5. So that's going to be my output, 5 over here. Negative 1 third times 0 plus 4. Well, 0 times negative 1 third will give me 0 plus 4. As I said before, it give us a different output. So when we use 3, uh, it gave us different outputs. When we use 0, it gave us different outputs, so that's definitely a way of being assured that choice D is correct. So choice D was the correct answer. That's a good question. All right. Triangle ABC is translated to create triangle DGF, DFG, sorry, as shown below. So here's our two triangles, ABC, DFG. All right. In these triangles, side AB, which is the side over here, it has some measurement 3 uh, times 2x plus 10 centimeters. It's congruent. Congruent means equal to. So side DF, which is the side over here. And side BC is congruent 
And so BC, which is a side over here, is congruent or equal to side FG, that side over there. Determine the values of X and Y. All right. So let's start with side AB, this side here. I notice it's equal to 3 parenthesis 2X plus 10. And it's congruent to side DF, or equal to this side, 12x plus 12. So let's solve it for x. First thing I'm going to do is distribute 3 times 2. x is 6x. 3 times 10 is 30. And that equals to 12x plus 12. All right, and now let's see. I usually tell my students when you're faced with this kind of question, either reverse it, the equation, because I like the bigger x on the left side, or start with the, leave the big x, bigger variable alone. So I'm going to leave the 12x alone, and I'm going to subtract the 6x from it. And that'll get rid of the 6x on this side, leaving me with a plus 30. And let me scroll down for a little more space. OK, that'll leave me with a plus 30. And on this side, it's 12x minus 6x is 6x. And I have a plus 12 I got to bring down. Now all I got to do is get rid of my plus, plus 12. And I will subtract that from this side. Plus equal signs there. So that way my plus 12 will cancel out on this side, leaving me with 6x which is what I wanted, and 30 and negative 12 cannot be combined, so you have to subtract the numbers and choose the sign of the 30 because it's larger. That'll give us 18. Now divide by 6. Divide by 6. X is equal to 3. So we just found the value of X. Now let's find the value of Y. Now in dealing with y, that's side BC. So let's take a look at side BC. So side BC, which is equal to 2y plus 12. And this side, which is congruent to it, FG, which is equal to 2 parenthesis 2y minus 3. All right. Let's distribute like we did a minute ago. So we got this side, and I'm going to distribute 2 times 2y. That'll give us 4y. 2 times minus 3 gives us minus 6. Now, as I said before, I usually tell my students either reverse the equation or leave the bigger y value or variable alone. So I'm going to leave that over there and move a smaller variable. So that way I can cancel out the 2y, leaving me with a positive 12. 4y minus 2y is 2y, and I have a minus 6 to bring down. Now all I have to do is use the additive inverse of minus 6, which is plus 6. And now the 6s are going to cancel out, leaving me with a 2y equals 18. Now all I have to do is finish up by dividing by 2, divide by 2, 2's cancel out, y is equal to 9, and that's my other answer. So I had over here x is equal to 3, and y is equal to 9. And let's check that. Correct. Okay, now how do you know that's right for sure? You should check your answer because you will have plenty of time on the state test. So check it to make sure. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. Since they said x was equal to 3, I'm going to put 3 times plus 10 in there just to see what that side value is going to be. So I'll put my x here at 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 10 in parenthesis is 16. And bring down this 3 here. 3 times 16, so this side is 48. So this side is 48, and that means this side's got to be 48. So let me put in my parenthesis there, plus 12. Inside the parenthesis, we said x was 3. 3 times 12 is 36. Putting down the plus 12, and yes, that equals 48. So we are definitely sure of our answer of x equaling 3. And we can do the same thing with the y value. So y we said was 9, so 2 times 9 plus 12. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 12 is 30. And we said over here, y again was 9, so I got 2 parenthesis, 2 parenthesis, minus 3 parenthesis. Inside the parenthesis, I'm going to put the 9. 2 times 9 is 18, minus 3, in parenthesis. Don't forget to bring down the 2. 18 minus 3 is 15, and 2 times 15 is 30. So just like this side was 30, so is this side 30. So I, again, I'm sure that my values x is 3 and y is 9 is correct. So that's a little check just to show you that they were congruent. So check your understanding. I hope you understand what's going on. If you're not sure, rewatch the video, re write your questions, try it again. Hopefully you get it. This is where we'll pick up on our next lesson. So take a look at this nonlinear function and see if you can figure out which one it is. If you need help, please dial it's Dollar Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380, Monday through Thursday at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget to watch our show, Math Time, on Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision Channel 15. Check out our YouTube study videos. Dan Robinson is my channel name. Don't forget to check out our latest video, Math Prep 17, PKMS, Math Prep 17. Tweet me at DRobinson. The Rob Math one. Good luck on your exam. If you would like to study more with me and you would like copies of different types of questions of this nature, write me at robinsonmath at aol.com. And uh, when you write me, if you want to be generous and help us with our work by sending a donation, please uh, let me know because all donations are definitely accepted. So I hope you got something out of the video. I'll see you next time.